Hey guys, this is Philip Morrow with MLC CAD Systems, and today I'd like to take you on a crash course of SOLIDWORKS settings and templates. Now, SOLIDWORKS settings can be broken into three distinct areas. You've got your system options, which are specific to your computer, your document properties, which are about whatever file you currently have open, and user interface customizations, which encompasses your toolbars, uh, keyboard shortcuts, or any hotkeys you've got set up. When you first open up SOLIDWORKS, there's a gear symbol at the very top of your screen, and this is the easiest way to access your system options. Here you'll find things specific to your installation. Perhaps you find the zoom direction feels backwards, and underneath view, you can choose to reverse the mouse wheel zoom direction, and that'll stick for every time you open up SOLIDWORKS. Now let's start up a new part, and a part is a good place to start as your initial template. This also gives us a few more items in the interface, such as a command manager or toolbar up top. You can drag one of the tabs of this command manager to reposition it on your screen, or even right click to add more tabs. You can use the search box on the top, re top right to, sketch for a to search for a specific tool, and even drag this onto toolbars and place them somewhere in the interface you want to use it. If you want to get deeper into hotkeys or mouse gestures, you can use this drop down arrow again right next to the gear symbol to find the full customization options. Now these all customize things about the user interface. But what I want to do is set up a new part template. I've started a part and I'm going to go back to my options gear and I'll find a new document properties tab. These are all things that are specific to this file such as its system of units being in inch pound seconds. Something else that's going to be important to me with every file I use are custom properties and those file properties can be found right next to the gear symbol. Here I can use drop down menus to pick things like a material and under value text expression again I can use a drop down to link to the proper syntax to link to the material of this part. I can also enter in things like a part number, I'm going to need one of those on every one of my parts and for now I'll just put in X's for that and same with a description, someone's going to need to fill out a description on every part I use. These are all going to be linked in other places like drawings, so I don't want to make a spelling or a capitalization error here. So if there's something on these drop down lists that's missing that you want to add, use the edit list button and you can add whatever you need to those lists. Okay, so I've added a few custom properties to this part, I haven't added any geometry yet, and I want to save it as a part template. In order to do that, do this, there's two things that are important. I'm going to go file save as, and I'm going to choose a folder that I've set up called SOLIDWORKS Custom. I highly recommend you do this. Anything you're customizing in SOLIDWORKS, instead of saving inside of those program files, make your own folder. You could even put this on a network drive and share it with other people. The second thing that's important is that in my custom uh, folder here, I choose the part template file type. This is .prt dot, and I can save this. I'll call it a new part. This will be my uh, new part template. Now in order for SOLIDWORKS to know where my templates are next time, I do need to tell it in my system options where my templates live. So I'm going to go back into system options for a specific area called file locations. This is how SOLIDWORKS knows where to go to get all sorts of things. If you use this drop down list, you can see SOLIDWORKS can look for all sorts of stuff. And under document templates, I've even got multiple folders mapped. You can add as many as you want here, or even use the edit all to change every single file location. And what I've added is just that my SOLIDWORKS custom folder is where SOLIDWORKS would look to find document templates. Let's go ahead and add that to the path, and I'm going to close this part and start a new part. Now at first I see the same menu options I saw before, but there's an advanced button in the bottom left that actually shows me everywhere that I've got templates saved every one of these locations, including the new one I just added called SOLIDWORKS Custom. That's just my, my uh, part there. And uh, we can find our new part templates here as well. <laughs> Actually, it's in my templates folder. Here's the one we just created called New Part. And I'm going to start a new part with that. And we can immediately see those custom properties I just made. So this is a good starting part. I would always do this first before going on to making a, a drawing template. And I'll show you why. It's actually easier if we make a dummy part here to set up our drawing templates with. So I'm just going to add a little bit of geometry out here. Something that I can throw a drawing view into a drawing with. Of course, I'm going to fully define my sketch. 
and let's just extrude this so I have something to work with. I'm going to give this a material since I've got that material property defined as a custom property. And then I'm just going to save this part. You do need to save your parts before you can insert them into a drawing. And I'm just going to call this a dummy part because I'm going to use this part to set up my drawing template. Part template was pretty easy. Made some part specific document property changes. Saved it as a part template. Told SolidWorks where to go in file locations. Now it's time to move towards a drawing template. I always do this first, this part template first, and add my custom properties. A drawing template is actually two templates. It looks for a sheet format, which is going to give me my paper size and border, and then also drawing template specific items, such as font sizes and system of units. So I've set up a dummy part with a new part template, and I'm just going to go File, Make Drawing from Part, and I'll just choose the generic drawing template that SOLIDWORKS comes with. SOLIDWORKS now asks me for that other item, that sheet format which controls the paper size. And for me, I'll just use, let's say, an A-size landscape sheet format. You can see some items are already set up here, such as dummy part. And in my view palette, I can grab a view just to throw it on. And a few more properties automatically came into this title block. For me, the perfect drawing has almost nothing typed into it. It pulls that information from the part. So how did these items get set up? Well, this is done on the sheet format layer. If you right click in the middle of a drawing, you can hit edit sheet format, which basically brings you down to this layer where you can set up things you wouldn't ordinarily need to type in, such as my material, the part name, maybe how much it weighs. In order to set these up, I'm on my sheet format layer and I would just set up a new note. I can place this note anywhere I want, maybe in this one, um, we want a part number somewhere. Um, let's put this in one of these boxes. It's ready for me to type in information, but instead, I'm going to look for the same icon, which looks like the properties icon with the chain link. This is my link to properties box. When I open up link to property, I could link from a property the current document, that would be the drawing I'm working on or a model found here, and you can see my dummy part is already the model that's found here, though I could choose another one. And I can get to the file properties of my part right here, so I can see part number description or add more if they are missing. Using a drop down, I could link to, let's say, the part number in this case. I'll choose OK. My part number shows up as all X's, and that's pulled directly from the part of my drawing. Now, once you've set up custom notes to automatically populated by what everything we pull on here, the top right confirmation corner will get you back to that drawing level where my view actually is. And you'll notice I can no longer click on these items that are at the sheet format layer. Sheet format also controls paper size and some scaling properties. A nice way to get to that is to right click on the sheet tab and go to properties. Here you'll find the default scale items come in, which sheet format this drawing is currently using, um, and scale factors and even datum labels for my first uh, view label would be view number A um, or letter A. If you're happy with those sheet formats, maybe the number of tabs and number of sheets that you have here and which sheet formats those are all using, simply save that sheet format just like we did a part template earlier. But there's an extra save sheet format button. Just hit file, save sheet format instead of save as and it brings you to a similar place. Now, just like before, I'm going to save this outside of my program folders into my SOLIDWORKS custom folder where I've got a few other sheet formats saved. And I'll just call this one a new sheet format. Now, that really only takes care of half of my drawing templates. That's just the sheet format. You also need to save the drawing template. And in general, the drawing template works just like the part template. If you go in your options, you'll find a document properties tab that controls everything about this specific drawing. Take a look at drawing sheets. You might want to use a different sheet format for every additional sheet that's added to a drawing in the future. Maybe your company logo only goes on the first drawing sheet and then you could use a different sheet format every time someone adds a new sheet to their drawing. Once you're happy with your document properties, such as your system of units or your drawing sheets, save this as well. In the future, I'll only have to hit File New and choose this drawing template. It's going to know to grab the correct sheet format and all of my uh, document properties. So back into my SOLIDWORKS custom folder, I will save this as a new drawing template. And 
<laughs> and one thing that's a good idea to do as well is to actually remove the drawing view that you used as a dummy part to set up these properties <laughs> so that this is going to be available to for uh, use with with anything in the future make sure you use that DRW DOT for the drawing template and save it as this file type now I've just made a part template added custom properties to it and then used that part template to create a dummy part which I then used to set up my drawing template in the drawing template I need to save the sheet format get down to that layer, link any custom notes to the custom properties for my parts or assemblies that I needed, and then save that sheet format and additionally save my drawing template. Now I've customized all these things, I've sold SOLIDWORKS where to look for it. What happens now if I want to go to a new machine or just share this with somebody else? Well it's actually pretty easy. All you need to do is go to the drop down arrow right next to that gear and look for save restore settings. This is going to launch the SOLIDWORKS copy settings widget, which will save all of my settings out to one file. This is everything in my system options, any layouts of toolbars, mouse gestures, hotkeys, and you can save it inside your SOLIDWORKS custom folder or even just here on your desktop. Now in the future, all I need to do is double click that one file, everything in my system options, all of my customizations will come back. If I was moving to a new computer, I would simply take with me my SOLIDWORKS custom folder, and my copy settings file and in a matter of minutes I can have this exact setup again or share it with someone else in my facility. So just to summarize a little bit if you take away two main things today create yourself a SOLIDWORKS custom folder that is outside the program files. Any template you save or any customization you make put it in that custom folder you can even share it with others across a network. And you use that SOLIDWORKS copy settings wizard. Now if you ever decide to move to a new computer or change locations all you need is your copy settings file and your custom folder. I hope this quick crash course helped out. Uh, if you can use any assistance in the future with settings or anything else SOLIDWORKS related, please let us know. Um, send us an email over at SOLIDWORKS support at mlc-cad.com.